What's going on everybody? Welcome to The Stack. Welcome back if you've been here before. I'm Neon Mushroom and today we have some more paper modern Magic the Gathering gameplay for you and it's round four of the four round tournament we've been playing. If you missed rounds one through three, check out this playlist or you can look at this same playlist in the description or you can look at the end card at the end of this video. But this is the final round and I didn't get any comments on whether this is a spoiler or not. So I'm gonna confidently say we're going into round four at three and oh. So if we win, we actually get like first or second at the event and if we lose, it's still pretty good but you won't know until you watch the video or until you skip to the end. It doesn't really matter to me what you do. Now, if you don't know what I'm playing, I'm playing Is It Murktide? And if you don't know anything about that deck, I'd recommend going to the first video of this playlist where I explain it in a little bit more detail, but it's a tempo deck. It plays cards that are in Is It Colors. It's very good, probably the best deck in modern. And our opponent, Jacob Morley, is playing like a deck I haven't seen up until this point. It's a Boros Lotus Field deck with like Nahiri's, and Emrakul's, it's a really cool build. I'm still, even after editing it, not sure like where we picked up this list or if we built it, but it's it's sweet. Actually, we, act, we played Rhinos, by the way. You guys wanted to see Rhinos uh, in the poll. Rhinos won. We played Rhinos last night, and there were some there were some sweet decks we played against then too. So that's one thing I'm actually getting kind of geeked about is getting, getting to see all these decks that are uh, not in the metagame that I can show you guys. But that's everything you should need to know. So we're gonna go ahead and play game, or game one of round four of the tournament we played in. Let's start. Game one, Jake wins the die roll, so he'll be on the plane. He's keeping a hand of seven cards. I do not have that luxury. We're gonna mulligan the hand of Expressive Iteration, Ragavan, Basic Island, Mishra's Bobble, Ledger Shredder, Subtlety, and Lightning Bolt. Sometimes you can keep one landers in this deck, but this being a Basic Island is an absolute no-go. So we're gonna keep the six of Misty Rainforest, Unholy Heat, Spire Bluff Canal, Mishra's Bobble, Murktide Regent, Consider, and we'll ship a redundant copy of Spire Bluff Canal, to the bottom of our library. Turn one, Jake drops a Foundry tapped and passes the turn. I'll drop a Spire Bluff Canal and pass right back. Then I'll play a Plains and try to pass, but before he can, I'll cast Consider, keep the card on top, draw it, on tap, and play a second Spire Bluff Canal. Then I'll drop Ledger Shredder, cast a Bobble, trigger my first Shredder, pitch a second one so it grows. Then I'm gonna Bobble Jake and pass the turn. In Jake's upkeep, I'll draw off the Bobble and he'll play a Cascading Cataracts and drop Blood Sun. He'll draw off the Blood Sun trigger and pass the turn. I'll drop a Misty Rainforest, attack Jake for two with my Shredder, dropping him to 18, and try to pass but first he's gonna pitch an ephemerate to solitude my shredder. I'll lose my shredder, but go up to 22. Jake drops a ganjo and tries to pass the turn back to me and I try to fetch, but he points out that the blood sun will not let me so I'm stuck with this useless misty rainforest. I'll play a scalding tarn, another useless land, and pass the turn. Jake's just gonna draw his card and pass right back to me. So I'll play a steam vents, which comes into play on tap thanks to the blood sun, and then I'll try to pass the turn. But at my end step, Jake's gonna cast Valakut Awakening and I'm gonna spell pierce the awakening. Jake's just gonna draw a card and pass the turn right back to me. So I'll play an expressive iteration. I'll put a shredder into my hand off the iteration, I'll exile a bobble and I'll bottom another copy of iteration. I'll cast the bobble, I'll bobble Jake, I'll see a cleansing wildfire and then I'll pass the turn. I'm gonna draw off bobble in Jake's upkeep. He's gonna play Nahiri the Harbinger and plus Nahiri to discard a wildfire and draw. Then I'll play a mountain as his land for turn. He tries to pass, but before he can, I'll cast Unholy Heat targeting the Nahiri and I am delirious, so this will deal six damage, killing the Nahiri. I'll play a polluted delta as my land for turn and just pass right back. Jake's once again gonna draw a card and pass the turn. I'm also gonna draw and pass, but at the end of turn, Jake's gonna cast a Solitude. Jake untaps, attacks for three with the Solitude. I'm gonna drop to 19. Jake's gonna go up to 21 thanks to lifelink and he'll pass the turn. I'll play a Dragon's Rage Channeler, try to pass the turn, but at the end of turn, Jake's gonna cast Solitude and I'm gonna counterspell the Solitude. Now that I'm tapped out, Jake's gonna drop a Plains and cast Golos, trigger Golos. Jake's gonna get a Lotus Field off the Golos, then he's gonna Ephemerate targeting his Golos, trigger it again and get another Lotus Field. He's gonna attack me for three with Solitude and I'll block with DRC. Jake will gain three and go up to 24 and he passes the turn. I'll drop an island, play a ledger shredder, and then I'm gonna cast a murktide regent as a 4-4. I am undersizing it because I have another murktide in my hand, and when I exile cards to the second one, the first one will get bigger. That's gonna trigger my ledger shredder, and I'll pitch a steam vents to the shredder. The murktide resolves, and I will pass the turn. In Jake's upkeep, the ephemerate is going to rebound. He will target Golos. He'll get a third lotus field, and then he's gonna cast Valakut Awakening to pitch one card to the bottom. That's gonna trigger my shredder. I'll pitch a tarn to the shredder so it will not grow. Jake draws two off of the awakening, and then casts Fury. Fury is gonna kill a Murktide. I really should have played around that. I wasn't even thinking about Fury. Then he plays Nahiri again, pluses the Nahiri and passes the turn. I'll open on Expressive Iteration, adding a bolt to my hand. I'll put a land on the bottom and I'll exile another Murktide Regent. I'll cast Murktide as an 8-8, triggering my Shredder. I'll pitch a Counterspell to the Shredder so it grows and then I will pass the turn. Jake's gonna float a ton of mana off his Lotus Fields and he's gonna spin Golos. The first thing he's gonna do off of the cards from Golos is Ephemerate the Fury to kill my Shredder. Then I'll play a Wall of Omens for free, drawing off the wall and I'll spin Golos again 
again, he'll cast another Blood Sun and draw off the Blood Sun. Then he'll Ephemerate his Fury, targeting my Murktide, marking 4 damage onto it. Then he's going to pitch in a Hiri to evoke another Fury, and that kills my Murktide. I cannot beat this under any circumstances, so I scoop. We're heading to game 2. Going into game 2, we are on the play, and I'm going to be quite frank. I had no clue what to do for sideboarding against him, so I did the few things I could think would actually be good. I added 2 Dress Downs and 2 Subtleties. The Dress Downs are because he plays a ton of Elementals, and the Subtleties are also because he plays a ton of Elementals. As far as trimming goes, I just cut one Consider, one Bolt, one Bobble, and one Serum Visions. There's no real rhyme or reason for these cuts. I just wanted to trim from the deck because I didn't want to get off of my main game plan in this matchup. Jake and I both keep 7, and my 7 includes Ragavan, Dragon's Rage Channeler, Ledger Shredder, Spire Bluff Canal, Lightning Bolt, Counterspell, and Unholy Heat. This one lander is a little bit risky to keep, but we have two creatures that we can cast, and we have a Lightning Bolt we can cast in my second upkeep before I draw to trigger my Dragon's Rage Channeler, and we're definitely the beatdown in this matchup, so I do not want to ship a hand with this much action. Turn 1. I'll drop a Spire Bluff Canal, drop DRC, and pass the turn, and Jake once again will lead on a tapped Foundry and pass back. On my upkeep, I will Bolt Jake to trigger my DRC, I'll put an Unholy Heat in the graveyard to the trigger, and then I'll draw for turn. It's not a land, so I just attack for 1, he goes to 16, and I pass the turn. Jake goes big brain mode here, he's going to play Flagstones of Tarkir and then cast Cleansing Wildfire, targeting his own Flagstones. That's going to trigger the Flagstones, so he's going to get a tapped Sacred Foundry and a Plains into play, draw off the Wildfire, and pass the turn. I'll attack Jake for 1, dropping him to 15, I'll play my Ragavan, and pass back. Jake drops a Blood Sun, draws off the Blood Sun trigger, and plays a Lotus Field, which will not force him to sacrifice lands, because it doesn't trigger, thanks to the Blood Sun. Then he's going to pitch a second Blood Sun to evoke Fury, killing both of my creatures, and to rub salt in the wound, he'll play a chalice on one and pass the turn. I'll play Misty Rainforest right on time, can't even fetch, so I'll pass the turn. Jake's gonna play Nahiri, plus the Nahiri, pitch an Emrakul, that's gonna trigger the Emrakul, he'll shuffle his graveyard into his library, and then he'll play Rest in Peace and pass the turn. I'll just draw a card and pass back to Jake, who's gonna plus Nahiri, discarding nothing, so there's no draw. He'll play Wall of Omens to draw a card and pass the turn. I, once again, am going to draw my card and pass to Jake, who pluses Nahiri, pitches a Golos to draw, plays another Lotus Field, cast Golos, triggers the Golos, gets another Lotus Field, and then I'm going to Chalice Chuck him, and he catches it, and he passes the turn. I'll draw and pass one more time. Then he's going to ult his Nahiri. He'll get Emrakul, and uh, I'm going to Chalice Chuck him again, I guess. Doesn't really matter. The Emrakul has haste. He's going to kill me dead. We lose this round 0-2. We got absolutely ranched. After editing those games, if there's one thing I can say confidently, it's that I could have played that matchup a lot better. In my defense, I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into playing against Jake. You guys will probably see more of Jake, as a matter of fact. I can promise you you'll see more of Jake because I played him when I was playing Rhinos and he was on a different deck. He kind of brings a different deck every week. He's kind of like uh, me and Max where we can just build whatever. Um, but going back and editing the game, I realized that like, okay, I was correct to play around the Solitude as hard as I did in game one. But at a certain point, like he did end up having three of his four Solitudes, but after a certain point, he's going to run out of those. And I had a pretty threat dense hand, so I shouldn't have held back as much as I did. There's a chance I could have tried to win game one, but it probably would have been close even if I had played it perfectly. As far as game two goes, I think my opener was defensible if I let on Ragavan. Leading on the DRC, there's some logic to it because you can really try to hit that land drop, especially if I had a consider, which I didn't. But if I had like a consider and a bobble, those one land hands are great. But I let on the DRC. I got blown out by Fury. And to be quite frank, if I was going to keep a hand like that, I should have led on a Ragavan. That way, if they didn't have the turn one Solitude or the turn one Fury, I could at the very least attack with the Ragavan, get my treasure and start to deploy my threats a little bit quicker. And I maybe could have won game two as well, but we lost games one and two because we were outplayed by Jacob. Uh, let me know. This is another call to actions for you guys because this is the conclusion of our four-round event. We went three and one playing Murktide. Murktide's what I main right now in Modern. So you'll see be seeing more Murktide for sure, but not soon. For these videos, I know I'm going to have to play some different decks. So look forward to another poll after this next batch comes out. But definitely in the comments below, if you've made it to this point in the video, I genuinely want to know feedback after having watched all four episodes of this modern gameplay series and i'm looking for a constructive criticism so if there's anything you wanted to uh to bring to light for me now's the time to do it with that said that's all i have for you guys today look for some commander content coming out tomorrow i don't know if i'm supposed to say that because it dates the video but i don't care because we're going to be uploading more thank you guys so much for watching and as always i'll see you next time